you know, I kind of I guess I'll start it off. That is, how do you come across a story like that? Because for me, it was, it was like 28, 29 minutes almost of like great like love and inspiration and then heartbreak. How did you come across that film and the story in general? Because it's something, you know, you probably, unless you know like the family or something, you'd be aware of it. Right, so when the couple got married, they got married at age 95 and 96. Which is incredible. Right? And so a photo was circulating online of them. They were being called America's oldest interracial newlyweds. And a friend texted me the picture, and I just was pulled into, you know, I just kept looking at them, and I wanted to know more about them. And so I connected the dots, and um, they invited me to come down and meet them. How, when you, when you see something like that, that's like an immediate reaction, sort of thing, like, oh my god, it's incredible to see someone get married at that age, yes. you know, uh, and be so kind of functional, too, and they were very, um, kind of independent, in, in a way, it seemed like they, they really, at that age, it, it's tough to be that independent as they were, how did that kind of come off to you, in a sense, uh, when you got to interact with them and meet them? It was really inspiring to see them, they had sparked, like, a new awakening in each other, mm -hmm. and so... They were. They would go out dancing at night. They would go to church, you know, often. And they were living. It felt like with a lot of vitality, and that they had invigorated that in each other. Um, and Edith's daughter Rebecca and her granddaughter Robin were helping care for them as well. So I mean, it, it was beautiful to see. What kind of struck you immediately? Like, once you started recording, anything that really kind of hit you once you started observing them that really stuck with you and stayed with you? Just seeing that they were always holding hands and um, the way that Eddie would bring Edith her teeth every morning mm -hmm. and they would put their teeth right. together. I'd never seen that before. It was a pretty startling shot, too, but it also was a very connecting yeah. uh, sort of thing. And so he really doted on her and she was just such a prayerful, faithful woman. Um, she would often recite poetry and sing to Eddie. They would share meals and she would sing like spiritual hymns to him. And he was really funny and witty. And it was just great to see them as a pair. Were they okay with cameras? Because it didn't seem like it phased them at all. You couldn't even tell that they were being filmed or anything. It was so natural. Yeah, they were really comfortable and they were really generous with is there anything maybe that you learned or took away from that? Because I think there's messages and, and things we can apply to our own lives by seeing them, how open they are, how accepting they were of each other. Is there anything that stood out to you that you kind of reflected on and maybe like incorporated in your life maybe? Yeah, the, just it excites me to think that you can find love at any time in your life. And um, it seems in our culture that the way that elders are often regarded is that at a certain point, life you know, starts to move more slowly and maybe people aren't having as active as a light at a certain age. And it's like, you know, why why is it like that? And it feels like um, Edith and Eddie were an example of living on their own terms or at least wanting to live on their own terms. How heartbreaking was it? Because you're following the story as the separation happened. You know, the forced separation, because obviously these two people wanted to be together. Um, what was that like for you to document that and uh, just take that in that this was going to happen? Um, it was really tough, and our hearts were breaking, you know, behind the scenes while we were witnessing this. And um, we thought that this was something, just a crooked situation mm -hmm. that was happening within this family and this couple. To only to come to find out that this is happening to elders all over and right. that it's really prevalent and that many people don't know until it happens within their own family. Um, and so it's often experienced in isolation and so people think there's, you know, the only ones or don't really realize that it's a really widespread issue. Is that more on the caretaker that kind of decides, because they couldn't obviously make decisions yet, someone making decisions for them. Uh, when something like this happens, when it's a marriage, how almost how does that happen? How does the law and just how does everyone uh, is so okay with that happen? Even the families, sometimes the families are more involved in a sense, but how do they allow that? 
Great question, and so many people that see the film ask that, and we were asking that ourselves. And recently, what I've been telling people is that this is an honest question that's being asked about a dishonest system and situation. Mm -hmm. And so, um, often, legal, in Edith's case, a legal guardian was appointed by a court because her daughters couldn't get along, and that woman didn't know Edith. So how would she know what's best for Edith or what Edith wants? Um, and so we see the complete disregard of Edith's wishes. Edith needed help in certain areas, but she was very lucid about what she wanted. She wanted sure. to live at home, and she wanted to be with Eddie. And it seemed like they were fully capable of knowing what they wanted, or yes. what they made them happy. Yes. And I think that someone kind of decides your fate, even though you're in a mental state where you still know what you want. Yes. Uh, and even if you're, whatever mental state you're in, what about your human rights? And, you know, your right to make your own decisions. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the the legal guardianship system is in really great need of reform. Yeah, I think that sheds a really light, and for someone like me who was even completely unaware of that, I, I believe that a lot of people wouldn't even be aware of these kind of situations and what happens. I you don't really either. think about it; it doesn't hit you. Sometimes, you know, you obviously take care of your parents when they get older. In most cases, but then there's real cases like this too that. For me, it was kind of eye-opening uh, in that way that, wow, you know, someone has so, so much say over someone's life without even knowing that. Yes, it's really eye-opening and it's alarming and we hope that the film will help serve as a wake-up call to people. And what we found is that it's so common, it takes different forms within mm -hmm. different families and situations, but there are common threads throughout. And you know, at screenings all over the world, people come up after or reach out and say, just sharing their own stories and they can relate in so many different ways. And you know, if you think about it, even when you have a loving family who wants the best for the person, it's still tough to deal with aging and end of life. And then if you throw in dysfunction or the court system, it just gets really tangled. They become they become a sideshow in a sense. You know, the main priority here, in the case these people become a secondary thing with all these issues going on, which is which is sad. How did how did Edith and Eddie feel about um, you know having this story told in a sense? How was their reaction to it initially when you start filming them, and um, how did they feel about just kind of sharing that? They were really open. I mean, they were proud of the love that they found with each other, mm -hmm. and so um, they wanted to share that, and none of us knew what was going to happen or what would unfold, so that was unexpected. I can imagine that moment, and it's almost so true to life that their love for each other was so strong that they couldn't live without each other. and. It's so heartbreaking and sad that it played out how the lost kind of lonely heart led to, to Eddie's death in a sense because he just couldn't be with, but it, it just, life wasn't purposeful anymore. And it was so quick it seemed too, um, after the separation. Obviously no one could have predicted that, but going into that, how, how did that change for you? When you're documenting the story and it gets to that point, and that quick downfall. How did, how did you almost change your process or how do you take that in? Yeah, it's, you know, that's what you sign up for with a documentary like this where you're following life as it unfolds. Mm -hmm. um, so we just remain open and um, at the same time, you know, our hearts are breaking and um, so we just stay centered in what we're there to do, which is our work, and then also behind the scenes. Um, grapple with it and um, you know we tried to be there for the family in the ways that we could and got involved behind the scenes as well but you I mean I just feel like you know every each documentary and every story is an adventure that you go on mm -hmm. and so wherever you know it's going to play out right that's where you go and in this case it was almost poetic and heartbreaking but also inspiring in the same way where all these emotions kind of can play in because the end result reflects 
story in itself, uh, the start of it. So it's almost poetic in a sense how it all came together. And here's kind of the thing where I'm wondering, you know, there's so much to tell about these people, but how do you do such a fine job of managing all in a half an hour kind of period? You know, Thank just you. the footage and everything. I'm just wondering, like, this story's told from beginning to literally the end in a sense. Uh, and of course, life is open ended in that way, but how do you manage to, like, structure it so it fits so nicely in such a short amount of time. Oh, thank you. Well, that's the power of editing, right? And <laughs> it's great editing. Yeah, you hear people say, like, um, the film is made in the editing room, mm -hmm. and to some extent, um, well, that's halfway true, right? Yeah. And so, just sticking with what is essential, um, because we went on to film for more than a year after what you see in mm -hmm. the film, and when things didn't pan out, there was an ending that we were waiting. We were waiting for Edith to come home, and she never did. So when I went to edit, um, I just realized that in 30 minutes, this really full, poetic, and potent story was. It felt like complete in the, at that length. Was there any family from Eddie's side? Because you didn't, you don't get to really hear anything. It seems he's kind of very alone uh, in that yeah. way. And Edith was his family and she was. His surrounding family. Is there any? Did you try to kind of connect the dots in a sense to, for his family? Yeah. So it, what was so beautiful was how Edith had brought him into her life and into her church community, sure. where they fully embraced him. Yeah. It was really special to see that, and um, he. His wife had passed away, as mm -hmm. he says, 10 years before, and he hadn't had any children, so he didn't um, have much everything go? family, and Great. so Edith and Rebecca and Robin had really become his family. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Did you follow up, yeah. now that the film's out, uh, kind of, what is this Edith's situation in a sense? Uh, yeah. Did she pass also? She did. Oh, no. <laughs> How long was it after? Uh, did you get any sort of follow up? How her reaction was she informed of Eddie, and um, what was that follow up after kind of when the movie ends? Yeah, so Rebecca, who is the daughter, who is another central character in the film, she, we were um, experiencing this through her after Eddie was taken away, and we continued to follow her for the entire film. And her access to her own home was quite limited. She never got to see her kid either. And um, so she did share with Edith about her things. She was first waiting to be in person with her mom so that they could grieve together. And then she did wind up telling me that she had her own home and that it was hard for Edith to fathom that he was gone. She kind of probably understood the situation too. You're very aware of what happened. Uh, what do you kind of, you know, I mean, this is like, in a sense, a portrait of, like, a commentary too on it, when it's change in our system. But it's also, I guess, in, in a sense, it also gives a, it's a story of hope, too, uh, because it shows that you can find love at any age. Yes. And that's very hopeful, because you don't hear about, like, the elderly getting married, and, and they do love also. It's almost, it gets to a certain age where, where someone gets older, you forgot about them. If you forget about their their actual feelings and love, and all these things are disregarded in a sense. Um, what was your kind of central message besides just telling their story that you'd like people to take away from it? Yeah, people have reached out and saying this inspired me to go home and talk with my own family about these issues. So that is a really direct and immediate impact that it's making, and that in and of itself is really powerful. Um, a bigger question that I carried through this was when and why have we lost our regard for our elders in this country and um, and how can we, you know, what can we do to change that to really honor people and, you know, Edith and Eddie, they were so dishonored um, at the end of this film and towards the end of their lives and so it just means so much to have this film that honors them. That honors and restores that yes. honor that they lost, in a yes. sense, through the story, yes. which is tremendous. How do you feel now that this film is nominated uh, for an Oscar? Which is, it must be unbelievable. I'm sure you had set out with intention, like, hey, I want this to be an Oscar-nominated movie. It's the story that matters. But now that 
it's gotten that acclaim and it's gotten people reacting all over the world. You said, what is that like uh, for you now to, to see kind of it? Uh, Steve needs absolutely incredible. Incredible. And it means so much because of the way this film was made, which was very, very hard. <laughs> devotion to, you know, wanting to see the truth. So to have it received in this way is it's just absolutely incredible and it feels very befitting because um, it's a testament to them and they are such a special story and it's such a special story that it, it feels perfect because it's like I just, I give it all to, to them. I think it's it's a fitting thing that it, I got to see it on Valentine's Day in a sense, you know, and it's such a lovely story and it just, it's weird how in life things kind of come full circle in a sense. And I feel like this is one of these films that you, they might be gone, you know, Zanetti, but I think the impact that they now can have with this film on certain people and, and the cause that you've kind of put out there uh, can be life changing. Oh, thank you. So that's, I, what we, that's what we pray and that's our goal. And that, you know, it's a very intimate story of them. They represent all elders that deserve, you know, that don't have a voice in a sense. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, just absolutely. to live with dignity. So thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. Laura. Thank I appreciate you. you doing this film. It just really struck me too and it was just very inspiring on many fronts and I certainly hope you win that Oscar. If not, it's still you still did a great job no matter what. You can be proud of it at the end of the day. Oh thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Sure. Yeah. Edith and Eddie, Edith. everyone go see it. We love you. <laughs>